Hello and welcome to today's live RFU webcast. My name's Ed Tarleton and you join me here at Alliance Park, home of Saracens, where finally we're going to see who will be in the under-15 VARS final to be held at Twickenham on March the 29th. Altrincham and Lim have already been played, so now it remains for Grosvenor School and St George's College to decide that final place. Johnny Bryan has the action. So one semi-final down, one to go. Who will take the last berth at Twickenham on Saturday week? Will it be Graveney School or St George's College, Weybridge? They will contest the second semi-final of the NatWest Schools Cup for the under-15s of ours here at the Alliance Park on a glorious Sunday afternoon here in North London. So this is how they line up. This is Graveney School. Number one, Epano Blankson. Number two, Anthony Pham. Number three, Kareem Swindells. Uh, Taylor Bell is in the side, but he will be wearing the number 17 jersey. And Ted Old John, he will be wearing the number 19 jersey. Will Tomlinson, six. Cameron Hines, seven. Josh Clarkville, eight. Archie Dunhill, the captain, nine. Ten is Matthew Harrison. Eleven, Alex Graham Buck. Twelve, Charlie Vink Wilkinson. Thirteen, Jamin Patel Haddad. Fourteen is Perry Blankson. And 15 is Ramon Strode Garcia, a late change just coming to us in the last few moments. St so George's Weybridge line up like this Jack Walters 1, Wilcock 2, Tom Pierce 3, Demi Tola Odembe at 4, Ryan Notter at 5, Marco Crawshaw at 6, Connor Kelly 7, Joe Terry 8, Harry Delaney with 22 tries this season at 9, Rory O'Neill 10. Harry Wellerall is at 11, I'll come to my sheet. Jamie Kelly, 12, Ollie Hall, 13, Ed Morrison, 14, and Joe Davey is number 15. The replacements. Dennis Glenn, Samper, we went in the number 13 jersey. Owen Powell, we went in the number 5 jersey. Zach Walpole, number 16 jersey. Bola Bamalende is the 11 jersey. Aaron Jackson, the 20. Victor Nozelli will win the 14 jersey at 21 there. And uh, Victor Nuz uh, Ramon Sturgassi is already a late change and is already on the field. Louis Dermot and Johnny Bowman, they are 16 and 17, respectively. Louis Hilton, 18. Max Steele, 19. Joe Duggan, 20. Tom Ho, 21. And Jamie Bowden is number 22. So, Ed had a chat with both the coaches before their second semi-final and here's what both of them had to say. Well Mark, we've just played the first semi-final here. You are taking part in the second semi-final. What does it mean to you to be able to come here and play? Ah, it's fantastic. It's just uh, brilliant for the kids. They've been so excited for the last two weeks since they found out and to be playing in a stadium like this on a lovely sunny day, it's just, uh, you know, it's, it's great. The boys have been uh, very excited to try and calm them down a little bit today and, you know, they're already pumped up and looking for the game, so it should be a good contest. Now, you've obviously met Grosvenor before in a high-scoring, intense affair. Do you know anything about them? Have you been able to put in any specific preparations? Uh, I probably don't know as much of the boy as the boys know, actually, to be honest with you, because um, the boys play against each other at club rugby. Um, most of the Grosvenor school play for Old Ruts, and a lot of our boys play for Irish. Um, so they've played against each other quite a few bit and few, quite a few times. We know that they're going to be a strong side. Uh, we had a game against them. We just scraped a win last year, but it was very, very even. Um, so I know that they're going to be very physical. Uh, they're strong, lots of really strong, big athletes in their side. So uh, it's going to be a real challenge, but the boys are all geared up for it and really looking forward to it. Now, a lot's been made of the surface here, obviously being a 4G, something that not all schools have got available to them. Have you been able to get down and train on any similar surface? Uh, a limited amount, to be honest with you. So we, um, Matthew Arnold School in Staines uh, kindly let us train on their facility and um, they've got a great 3G and 4G uh, pitch um, on Friday last we were just down there and it was, that was really beneficial and we played one warm-up game in Maidenhead on the 3G a couple of weeks ago as well so uh, yeah that's been a real help. Do you think that the style that you bring to the game will, will suit this kind of surface fast? And, I think and both, both teams actually uh, they've got a lot of pace and we like to play quick game and we're all told as coaches by the RFU to try and coach expansive rugby so I think it's going to be a really open game and both teams are probably going to look to run the ball quite a lot so yeah certainly suits us and it'll be interesting to see what happens. Well 60 minutes down between you and Twickenham we wish you the very best of luck. Thank you very much. Thank Cheers. You. All the best. 
Well, Stasher, it's a beautiful day here and you stand just 60 minutes away from a potential appearance at Twickenham. Your guys, something of a surprise package. How does it feel to be able to bring your team here? It's fantastic. It's a fantastic opportunity for the boys. It's um, an opportunity for them to play on a big stage and in a big tournament and playing against some of the best schools in the country in the run-up to this. So it's a real pinnacle of their career. It's something that we've been working really hard towards and, and I'm really proud of what they've achieved. I think they are too. What's the mood been like in, in the camp this week in the build-up to this? Um, it, it, it's been excited. They've been really excited, mainly about getting to stay in a hotel with each other. Um, but they, yeah, they're really looking forward to the game. I think they just want it to be here now. I think they just want to kick off. A um, few nerves kicked in this morning, but other than that, they're just excited. I think they're much more confident than when they first started in the tournament than they were. Um, they've definitely had some good performances. They've got some good score lines under their belt and, and they've got the confidence to play. Now you talk about some of those score lines. I mean, your school are, as we said, something of a, of a surprise package on the circuit. But has confidence grown as you progress through these rounds? Definitely. There's a lot more self-belief now. Uh, I think at first they used to not give some of the uh, the better, more established schools too much respect, but I think they didn't give themselves enough respect. I don't think I think they underestimated how good they were uh, and the potential that they've got. And we've got a team full of athletes that are willing to run and play what's ahead of them, and I think that's dangerous. Now, obviously, we've mentioned with Mark Creaney, the coach of the, of the other side, that you guys have met before, but what kind of style are you looking for your lads to bring to this fixture? We just play simple rugby. We just we keep it simple, we keep it basic, and they just play what's ahead of them. Uh, if something's on, they'll run it. Even if it's not, then they'll make a they'll make a good decision and do something else. They've got a good variety to their game, and that's what we've built on. I think previously we were thought of as just a team of. Um, boys that could just run and, and not necessarily play rugby and now we can still run as quick and we can still run as, as fast and as wide but we can play rugby as well. Now obviously I mean you don't even have a pitch at the school so I mean it's a real testimony to the dedication of your players that they've got this far isn't it? Yeah we're massively indebted to Old Ruts where all of the boys play their club rugby. Uh, fortunately I'm their coach there at that age group which helps, uh, it keeps the numbers high and yeah we work hard with them. I think it really helps that they all play for the same club because they know exactly what the other players are going to do and how they're going to react and that's a really good thing for them so they're confident because they play week in week out with each other they just don't have the the, the benefit of being able to play on the school site or, or train at school so everything they do they do in their own time and I think that makes it so much more um, valuable that they've got this far because they're really being rewarded for the amount of commitment that they've put into it. Now I think there's one thing that obviously all the coaches are saying is that it's not just about the winning on the day it's the experience for everybody obviously coming here to Allianz Park in the semi-final is a massive reward but let's talk briefly about what happened at Nat West in Tooting because you went along there and, and decorated it with the boys didn't you? Yeah we got a letter from the regional CEO uh, a really a nice guy called Gary Bennett who said that they were just so tremendously proud of what we'd achieved and that everyone in the whole community wanted to get behind them and they wanted to be the platform to show that so they invited us down to the branch we took the boys down in their kit one lunchtime and all the staff came out and they'd got these special posters done saying they were supporting Graveney School they'd bought bunting and balloons and the boys got to decorate the branch and just randomly people were waiting in the queue for the cashier and they were just shaking their hands and wishing them the best of luck and and that was so nice for the boys to know that there was such an extended group of people that were supporting them today, not just the people maybe who've, made, who've, who've managed to get here today. Well, it has been something of a fairy tale story for you so far, and we wish you the very best of luck thank in the so fixture much. coming up. Yeah, thank you for all your help. Thanks. Thank you. So there you go. The thoughts of both coaches, Mark Lean and Anastasia Long, ahead of this second semi-final. Altigan Grammar School awaits the winner. They beat Lim High School in the first semi-final by 20 points to five. But who will join them? We're just moments away. Both teams in the tunnel as I speak. It's life in the Alliance Park here in North London. Graveney School against St George's College, Weybridge. Been an interesting journey for St George's. They're only a one-term rugby school. They only play rugby in the autumn. And it's interesting to see that even through the winter, they still got victories over Saffron Waldron School and and uh, Hurstburg Points School and Reading School as well in the quarter-final, defeating them by 17 points to five. Graveney School beating the Duke of York Military School in round six, 10-0. London Auditory by seven points to five. Cleveland Community School in the quarter-finals in a rampant victory by 40 points to seven. You can see there, both teams, they do like racking up the points. 
So we could expect some uh, attacking rugby here this afternoon. Both teams well supported in the stands. So as I mentioned, just moments away now, kicking off at the top of the hour. Both teams ready to do battle. With the prize, a chance at Vars glory at Twickenham. The replacements making their way out. And here come, right on schedule, both Graveney School and St George's College Wavers. Just to remind you, under 15's competition, 30 minutes a half. So one of these teams is an hour away from a data HQ. And here they come. So then both teams go into a huddle. Graveney School. Connor Kelly. And St George's College there. Giving his orders to his men. And Graveney in the pink, black and blue. So both of them getting ready now to do battle. So then, second semi-final of the under-15 Vars, the final match here at the semi-final weekend. <laughs> I love that trumpet, I really do. I love that fanfare. The other did at the Stade de France last night, I thought, but still brilliant. A little bit of a knock forward there. So knock-on advantage being played here. For St George's, coming through with Joe Terry, Delaney, inside to the captain Connor Kelly. Delaney again, O'Neill, Jamie Kelly, out on the right hand side to Ed Morrison. He finds touch, and we'll see the first line out of this second semi final. Collected by St George's, Delaney, Kelly, a thumping run, Delaney goes left, to Ollie Hall, a little bit of a high tackle there by Kareem Swindles, 
And the referee just saying no more of that, if you don't mind. Penalty advantage for that high tackle. Options now for Delaney. And they're going to go for a little tap and go. Notter. Penalty this time to Graney School. Chance then for to gain some yards off the field. Let's see what Matthew Harrison will do. It's not going to reach touch though. Oh, just about, just over the head there of Ed Morrison. And a great kick all the same from deep inside their own half. They're up to the St George's 22. Delaney, box kick forward. The river juggling act. In the meantime, we do have a, a player down. That's Harry Delaney. Just receiving some treatment. Good start to this game. Once again, just to remind you, 30 minutes per half. Twickenham, the destiny for one of these two players, and it looks like Adi Delaney's back onto his feet and back to continue his job. A scrum half. Scrum down. St George's ball. Awkward scrum for St George's, but they collect. Delaney. Nice inside pass here to Jamie Kelly. Delaney goes left. Jack Walters gaining ground. Cheered on by the crowd. Delaney again. Great tackle. Thumping tackle there by Cameron Hine. Delaney again. Pick up for Jack Walters. Harry Delaney going left. A little bit of a gap opening up here. There is space here for Rory O'Neill. Good offload to Joe Davey. Inside, Graveney half. Delaney going right. O'Neill. Jack Walters stopped in his tracks. Advantage being played. Little chip over the top. How's was the bounce? It's very good. <laughs> Look at a thumping tackle there on, on Jamie Kelly. Good stuff there from Cameron Hine, showing his intent from the off.
So Lynott inside the 22. St George's don't win it though. But they, get it, they get it back. The Archie Donald got nowhere. He's picked up, carried away. And now here comes St George's. Driving forward towards the line. Are oh, they going to get down there? Just held up. It's gone down five metres out, but it's St George's, the ones who are showing the attacking intent in the first part of this first half. Terry Delaney, shot to the corner. No, the touch shot says he, he, he went out. But they go again. Five meter scrum. 22 drop out, do beg your pardon. So near yet so far for St. George's. They show how dangerous they can be on the attack. And here they come again with Harry Delaney. Delaney to Joe Terry. Going right to O'Neill. O'Neill inside to Jamie Kelly. Ball went backwards at the referee. Connor Kelly. For that time, he went forwards. They got very near here. Teddy picked up to Delaney. Delaney to his right hand side. But Ed Morrison couldn't get over. He found touch instead. to be. Scrum down. Gravely score with the foot in this time. Their captain, Archie Donnell. We'll try that one again. Good scrum from St George's, but Graveney collect. Donnell. Harrison. And now they're full of running, and Graveney are off to the races. It may have been lost again, it has, it's been turned over. Delaney with the kick upfield. To Farm. This is Vink Wilkinson. Out wide to Graham Buck. Alex Graham Buck full of running, full of pace, look at him go. What a run this is! Superb! Absolutely superb! And you must say, it's against the run and play. But Graham, he won't mind that. They don't take any opportunity given. Alex Graham Buck over the line, out of the post, full of running, full of pace, full of vigour. First blood, Gravely. From inside his own half, look at him go. Collects and he's off. Nobody can catch him. Nobody got near him. Outpaced them all. Gravely. 5-0 ahead. And the extras slotted over. Don't know lots of the extras. Alex Graham Buck, first try of the game, 7 0. Go, 
Graham to collect. St. George's have it though. O'Neill. And Gravely win the penalty. That's a good kick as well. There from Matt Addison. Josh Clark Bell on hooker duty. Dunham. Harrison. Inside to Will Tomlinson. Ball's not forward though. And Graveney will have the foot. And St George's, I should say, will have the foot in. Delaney. Ed Morrison. O'Neill. Kelly. This is Ollie Hall. Terry. Odembe. O'Neill under pressure. And Gravely score will have the chance to clear their lines. Do another thumping kick into touch. Josh Clark Bell on hooker's duty. And Touch just spots or something, think the referee's spotted the same, and then there's going to be another Gravely penalty. Me fancies a pop at a post. There's Archie Donnell. Tell you what, it'll be a good effort this. It's a good, well, 30 metres out. A bit more for the angle as well. So Dunno, this to go 10 points clear, 15 minutes into this first half. Not a bad effort, but left hand side of the upright, not to be. St George's will have the restart. Picked up by Matt Harrison. Harrison inside for Dunhill, and he's away again. Graham Buck, he can't stop him. 
He can't stop him. He's away in the, in the corner. And it's another try for Gravely School. I've been covering the NatWest Schools Cup for about three years now. And there was a kid last year, I think Zach Giebrug, I think his name was, who dazzled me with his pace. But Alex Graham Buck, they can't stop him. He's lightning fast on the wing. Second try of the game. 12 0 Gravely School lead. And Archie Dunlow will have the opportunity to make it 14 0. And St George's College, though, they haven't played that badly. Just missed on the left hand side. So. We're halfway through this first half. Graveney School 12, St George's College nil. But one thing I will say, I can see how St George's getting back into this game. They do have the attacking intent, they do have the quality there. But they're behind the eight ball at the moment. Cameron Hine collects. A little bit of a juggling act from Matthew Harrison. Ball is still alive. Donnell. Harrison with the boot forward. It's going to stay in field. Good collection there from Joe Davey. Davey on the counter attack himself. Hardy Delaney goes to his right. A little, little, little bit of a touch of a forward pass there from Rory O'Neill. And the referee agrees with me. And it will be a Gravely scrap. So, Graveney with the scrum on their own 10 metre line. Good scrum from Graveney. Harrison with the boots up the field. Sliced away though and caught by Harry Weatherall. Taken back, intercepted, and they're off and running again on the right-hand side this time. Teddy Blankson this time, getting into the 22. The ball comes out and it's loose and it's and found by Jamie Kelly. With an advantage to be played as well. For a knock-on. Advantage will be over now as Adi Delaney hoofs it high into the air. Collected and it's out again, ball is out. And the ref and the Graveney could be really in here. Here's Graham Buck again. This is going to be his hat trick. Are they there? Just a few metres out now. Graveney are dangerous in these positions, but it will be St George's who will have the chance to clear. Very dangerous counter attacking team, Graveney School, from what I've seen this first 20 minutes. Happy to absorb the pressure, and then when they get the ball on the counter, they're happy to run with it. They're in again. It should be down for a try here. Just hold up, five metre scrum. 
And St. George's, defensively, at sixes and sevens. And the touch judge may have spotted something here. He's given the try. Another try for Graveney School. The touch judge was the one who gave the decision. Let's have a look at it here. All from the scrum. Sixes and sevens. Good tackle it was there from Connor Kelly. And it was Archie Donhill, the one who got over the line. The referee thought he was held up, but the touch judge spotted it on the other side of the field. And all of a sudden, Graveney School are really cashing in here. 17 points to nil ahead, and this to go 19 nil clear. Good effort. But alas, it's still 17 points to nil and a frenetic first 20 minutes for Graveney School. St George's College was the one who started the better of the two. But at the moment, Graveney are the ones. That may not go 10 metres from the, uh, the kickoff either. Instead, it, it is, we continue. And here come Graveney again on the counter. It's at the dangerous of running rugby. Harrison. Inside, up to the 22 now. With Jackson. But the ball was not forward. And St George has rather a chance to just have a breather. Delaney with the foot in. And now St George's are off. Nobody there to help Joe Davy out. Where's the cavalry? The ball is out and loose again. And back in Graveney hands. And this is where they're dangerous on the counter attack. Taylor Bell. Tell old John. Alex Graham Buck. Not to be though. As, as knock on. And St George's will have the put in. It's fast and frenetic. O'Neill, ball dropped but went backwards at the referee. Jamie Kelly looking to find some space and, and a gap, tackled though. Delaney to Jack Walters. St George's need to get on the score sheet in this first half. O'Neill spots a gap, gains some yards. Ollie Hall. Little chip forward. And call for the mark. And Graveney will get the chance to clear. Kicked back by Ollie Hall. Back. And another mark call by Matthew Harrison. This time he may go for the touch instead. 
Will he get there? It's not going to get to touch though. Two lads under it, picked up by Wellerhall. Into Graveney territory, and they win the penalty. Tackling not rolling away, taken quickly by Addy Delaney. Delaney, good offload, with an advantage to be played. Crawshaw up to the 22. Delaney, inside to Ollie Hall. Delaney again, O'Neill. This is Joe Terry. Loose pass though, Jack Walters needs to collect. Good offload to O'Neill. O'Neill, two men to his right. It's a chance into the corner. Maybe. Is it going to be Jamie Kelly's time? No. Delaney. Darts it goes himself. Up to the five metre line. Crawshaw acts from half. Joe Duggan. Delaney goes left. O'Neill. Inside to Ollie Hall. May have been turned over. Or has it? Or has it? No. Penalty to Graveney, which they take quickly. And they catch him off guard. Harrison is away. He's been one player and another. And he's still running. He's still going. Nobody was there with him, though. He was too quick. And he gets into touch. Fast and frenetic in the semi-final. So 90 seconds to go in this first half. Placing to be main, number 17 coming on for St George's, that's uh, Louis Dunmore. Chuck Walters. A little bit of back trouble. Not to be for him. Swindles goes to ground. Advantage to be played. For an early knock on, and they'll come back to the scrum. Donhill picks up, tries to offload it and does so. Little box kick forward. Donhill says to his men, chase this. Missed by Joe Davy, so advantage being played here. Can Graveney add to their score here towards the end of this first half? No, but they'll have the put in at the scrum though. Play down here for uh, Grady School. Looks like Matt Harrison just uh, getting some treatment. A bit of a knock, knock in the face. And some members of the teams from the uh, earlier games. Yes, boys, you're on TV. So 
So this could be one of the uh, last few phases of play in this first half. And it's been a Graveney onslaught. Some great counter-attack in rugby from Graveney School. Now uh, Anastasia Long will be very proud of what she's seen from her side in this first half. So Donald with the putt in at the scrap. Collected though by Delaney. O'Neill with the boot of the field. A spinning kick which is collected by Tillo John. Penalty to St George's, take it quickly. Delaney, he's off, he's away. To show the 22, who's there? Man on the left hand side. Oh, the pass is not there though. And it was forward as well. And that will be half time. Do have a man down as well. He's just getting to his knees right now. Hopefully he's okay. But it has been the, the, the men in pink and black and blue who have currently made St George's black and blue but an onslaught from Graveney School because at half time they lead by 17 points to nil So let's have a look at the tail of this first half. As I said, it's been a grave day onslaught. Look at the left wing go here. Alex Graham Buck, full of pace, full of running. Nobody could catch him from Graveney, and it caught everybody off guard. They didn't expect him to be that quick. And he was in under the post. Here it is again, watch him here, collects the ball, sees the space, and he's away. Sells the dummy to Joe Davey. I'm going for the corner, Sunshine. I'm here, I'm there, we're in the lead. It's again the second try. Much of a carbon copy of the first. As Alex Graham Buck on the counter attack. And this, this is the third. St. George's losing possession from the scrum. As Joe Teddy picks up, fumbles it, and it out came to Archie Dunhill. Pickpocketed the ball and pickpocketed St George's to pick up another try. Referee didn't think it was at first, but consulted the touch judge who said, yes, it, the ball was grounded by Dunnell, and that made it 17 points to nil. And that's where we stand at half time.
So here we go then. 30 minutes away for one of these teams to play against Altrincham Grammar School in the final at Twickenham on Saturday morning, two Saturdays from today. Awkward bounce from Dunhill. So much for so, he knocked the ball forward. So, a chance here for St George's. In the scrum. Need to get on the board early here. If they've got any chance in this game, they've got to get on the board early. Delaney with the foot in. Picked up by Joe Terry. Good defence from Graveney. Delaney going left. The ball is dropped, it's loose though, and they're away again. This is Matthew Harrison. There's nobody there, nobody there to, to stop him. How is he full of pace, full of running, and they're on their way to Twickenham now, surely. Matthew Harrison, the scorer, 22 points to nil. And St George's have it all to do. They had to climb Kilimanjaro before the start of the second half. He's not just turned into Everest. Graveney with one foot and a couple of toes. One foot and a couple of toes into the Vars final. And Dunno looking to add the extras. Slotted home. 24 points to nil. And St George's College. Three tries and a penalty behind. Three converted tries and a penalty behind. In 30 minutes of play, it's possible, but unlikely. If they're going to do it, they've got to do it bit by bit. They've got to get on the score sheet soon. And one thing must be said, they haven't played too badly, to be fair. But it's just unforced errors, just like that. That's what stopped them. They're getting in the right spaces, they're getting the right gaps, it's just not happening for St. George's. So what can they do here? The chance now. Chance for St. George's at the end of the score sheet. Looks at the air, are they? Oh, he might have been held up. That is good. tremendous defence if he's been held up. Oh, brilliant. Brilliant defence from Gravely School. Jamie Kelly thought he was there in the corner. I think we all did. And how frustrated uh, St. George's College right now. Look at this on the replay. Some brilliant defence here. Kelly thought he was in. He was away. In the, looking for the corner. But he was held up. By Perry Blankson was one player. Just trying to spot who the other one was. Tremendous defence from Graveney School.
So here they come. Can they get on the score sheet now? Kelly again. A couple of metres out. Delaney. Goes a little darting run himself. Zed goes backwards. Dunmore. Five metres out. Numbers on the left hand side if they go quickly. Joe Duggan, is he there? Yes, he is! Hits the post. Counters the line. Joe Duggan. And with the kick, we'll reduce the arrears to 17. And that will give them confidence. You never know, it could build some momentum for them. Good try that from Duggan. Stayed strong all the way. Got in over the line. Twenty-four points to five. Rory O'Neill looking to add the extras to make it a seventeen point game. I said just gotta try and eat eat into that little lead. And you never know if they get within ten, they could. They could start really putting some pressure on Graveney, and you never know what can happen in the last 10 minutes. But they've got to find another try as quick as possible. Ball is converted by O'Neill. The arrears are reduced to 17 points. 25 minutes to go or so. Good kick there from, from O'Neill. So, 17 point game. O'Neill collects. Ball knocked forward though, and Graveney will have it in a dangerous position. Donnell into the 22. Swindles. St. George is to stay in this game. They've got to stop Gravely scoring here. They have to draw a blank. Clark Bell. And that's what they have done. They'll have the put in. Delaney with it. Hoofed upfield. Ball is dropped, but still collected by Ramonstrad Garcia. Again, ball knocked on, and it will be a St. George's scrum on the halfway line. As the change is about to be ringed. Jack Walters coming back on the field. And Oscar Riley also making an appearance.
The referee not happy with both teams' efforts there, so we'll go again. Delaney loses it. O'Neill collects it though. Answer number 20. Joe Duggan. The try scored out. But he finds touch. Maybe a line out. Great new ball. Addison spots the gap, spots the space. Puts Joe Davy under pressure. And all he can do is boot it into touch. And, and chance now for Graveney to add a few extras here. Madison, inside to Swindles. Couple of men over on the left-hand side, is a chance in the corner, maybe, is there? In touch. Paddy Blankson finds touch with his feet. And that would, definitely would have put the game to bed. Player down in the corner as well. That's the reason for the delay. One of the uh, St George's players down in the corner. He's, he's, he's setting up though. I think just a problem with the ankle. Some of the coaching staff from uh, St George's coming onto the field for a mid-half team talk. So roughly 20 minutes to go. So our, our clock's not not stopping. So it's only an approximation when it reaches the 60. Just a little bit of treatment in the corner. It's out of our camera camera's view up here on the gantry. So can't really tell you who it is who's down at the moment. So it's the cavalry is actually being uh, a replacement. In fact, it's, it's come from all the other end of the, of the field where he's been warming up. Number 21 coming on the field, Tom Ho. Loose again, but Graveney pick it up, and then the gap was spotted. Nobody saw it. It looked a little bit loose, but over the line they go. And now you can definitely say, with all confidence, Graveney will be heading to trick them. Taylor Bell, the scorer. He went backwards. He took one step back, and then took five ahead. 
Black Lasser defence from St George's. And the lead's been restored. And Graveney score look like they're going to be heading for Twickenham in two Saturdays' time. Just misses on the right hand side, but still 22 points clear. And roughly 20 minutes to go in this game. Graveney School 29, St George's College Weybridge 7. Walters into the 22. O'Neill, good offload. Deep in Graveney territory, O'Neill, Kelly, good offload there to Ollie Hall. Box kick forward. Lost though by Harry Williall. So Graveney with the knowledge that they'll have a scrum. And the referee says they can have that right now. Donnell with the foot in at the scrum. Hardison. They're away again. They're away again. Jackson is away. Good tackle. Swindles. Donnell. Chip forward, and the mark is called. Hein. Loose pass, but it's, it's, it seems to work, and it's okay. It's Jackson again. The referee calls the penalty. And a chance to get the ball into Gravity territory. Graveney, back in the St George's half, Dunhill, picked up by Harrison, 
A little bit of a bounce before him. He still collects. But not this time. Ball knocked forward. St. George's foot in. Again, a loose pass there. Seen that a few times today from St George's. So Dunhill, putting up the scrum, Harrison with the hoof upfield, slice kick though, and this may work, it's in George's favour will it, no it won't, and here comes the Graveney counter attack, stopping its tracks this time, ball is out, who wants it, who has it, could it be Joe Duggan again? Little chip forward, too much on it. Just one of two players is receiving some treatment on the field. I estimate a, well, a good uh, 13 minutes left. Ball hooted back of field. Delaney with it. Under pressure. Still holds on to the possession now. This is better. Joe Terry. O'Neill. Axe scrum half. Ollie Oscar Reilly. They'll come back for a penalty. No doubt this will be a tough and go. Instead, maybe a, a kick to the corner. Into the Gravely 22. Tom Pierce with the line outs, collected by Louis Dunmore. But Dunmore finds touch. Graveney at the line out, they collect.
but turned over by St George's. Looking to drive forward, are they there? They're not far away, they're not far away. Good defence though from Gravenick, sending them back. The defence is that good, that they'll have the foot in the scrum. Here's the scrum, picked up, no, referee not happy, for the moment there, looked like St George's were in, but they reload. Another driving scrum. Are they there? Are they there? They're close to it. Turned over instead. But it hasn't gone too far though. Gravely still have it though. Ball knocked on, so good chance here for St George's. The scrumming in attacking position. Cavalry coming on. Number 16 for Gravely School. Zach Walpole. Another stoppage in play, another play down. Player down. I'm just trying to spot who it is. I think it might be Karim Swindles. No, no, Swindles is standing. I'm just number. Looks like he looks okay though. Number seven, Cameron Hine. So then, here they come. O'Neill. Don't even, even confuse our cameraman. O'Neill. Well, all. Five metres is out. Oh, ball is dropped again. We've seen that so many times today from St George's. Unlucky. It's only yet so far.
Ball lands it into touch, so another chance here for St George's. Most attacking. Time they've been in this uh, second half. Well done. Good stuff there from St George's. They'll get possession with a five metre scrum. And some more replacements about to make the field. Number 19 and 22 coming off of St George's. That's uh, Will Hilton and Jamie Bowden. So Delaney with the put in, five metre scrum. Chance on the right hand side to go quickly. They're going to go left instead. Number seven, Connor Kelly. Advantage being played. Instead, they're spotting a little bit of a gap. A little bit of an opening. Done more. Back for the penalty. Top and go taken quickly again. But the ball was knocked forward. It's been that kind of day for St George's. So Graney with the put in. Harrison boots it up the field. A great kick of this as well. A little bit of a juggling act in the air, but Graney collect. In fact, the ball was knocked forward, so it will be a St George's scrum. Getting towards the end now. What's been four great days of rugby, two days last week and two this week. This is some great rugby and it all comes to a head 13 days from now at Twickenham. They can grave me again. Can they finish with a flourish? Maybe they will. Maybe they will. Yes, they will. Aaron Jackson's in. That's the coup de grace.
and Gravely School will play Altrincham Grammar School in the Vars final at Twickenham a week on Saturday. Point slotted over, and that was the final nail in the coffin. Gravely School have been rampant. A rampant Gravely School running through six tries. And they will be heading to Twickenham. A week on Saturday. Anastasia Long will be very proud of what he's seen from her side. And Altrincham School is still in the, in the stands. They'll be keen spectators of what they've seen. Though none of that to combat, combat the danger of the Gravely counter-attack. Matthew Harrison scored a try. Alex Graham Buck scored in two. Aaron Jackson scored in one. Archie Dunhill put in 11 points on the board. Taylor Bell with a try as well. Just wasn't St George's College's day here. They got in the areas, that they got where they needed to be. It's just one or two unforced errors at the wrong time for them. Alas, it's Gravely School though who head to Twickenham. They beat St George's Weybridge by 36 points to seven. As I mentioned, we've had four great days of rugby over the last two weekends here at the Alliance Park, the home of Saracens here in North London. The under-15s cup final will be contested between Warwick School and Queggs of Wakefield. That's a repeat, a repeat of the 2013 under-15 final. Exeter College will play Trent College at the under-18 bars final. And then the final, what a final, the under-18s cup between Warwick School and Dulwich College. If, you, if you're in the South London area, if you're in the London area and you want to come down to Twickenham, go on rfu.com, have a, have a look, see how you can get tickets. Trust me, you want to come to that under-18 cup final, it should be immense between Warwick School and Dulwich College. Just, just for the atmosphere. Both schools have a rowdy bunch of supporters. And it'll be a great atmosphere on Saturday afternoon, Saturday week. Superb. Superbly played. This is the story of the game, and it was... St George's College, I will say, they started the quicker of the two teams. They nearly got a try in the first couple of minutes, but then all of a sudden, Graveney come out of the traps. Oh, well, and I say come out of the traps with their left wing, Alex Graham Buck. He was not stoppable. He was unstoppable, I should say. When he picked up he, and went, he was lightning fast. You see how quick he is. The second dry is more or less a carbon copy of the first. Spots the gap again. It's Alex Graham Buck. Sprinting down the wing. And Graveney were 12 0 clear in the blink of an eye. Archie Dunnell. Referee thought he was held up, but the touch judge said no, Dunnell got the try. Matthew Harrison early in the second half. Running from inside his own half, spotted the gap. He was too quick. 
he was in under the post and by that time they were there St George's did get on the board Joe Duggan the scorer a well worked try they were patient here and he thought that time they may have had a little bit of a sniff of getting in, into this game. They did spend a lot of time in the last part of the second half inside the Gravenie 22, but the Gravenie school's defence remained strong. This is Taylor Bells. A little bit sloppy with the collection, picked up, went backwards, took one step back and took a number forward. He got over the line as well. And this is Aaron Jackson with the final try for Graveney, which sends them to glory and to Twickenham Saturday week. So there you have it. There you go round the pitch. To receive the, the warm congratulations from the crowd. Graveney School will play Alton Grammar School in the Vars final. As they have beaten St George's Weybridge by 36 points to seven. So we're just trying to edge out in the middle of the pitch. I think he's grabbed Anastasia Long. Down and join him shortly. Graveney School. They'll be the first match on against Altrigan Grammar School, the 11 a.m. kickoff on School's Cup Day on Saturday week. And no doubt the coaching staff will be delighted, the school will be delighted. And Anastasia Long is down on the pitch with Ed. Let's hear her thoughts. No doubt a delighted Graveney coach. You're going to Twickenham. How do you feel? Fantastic. I'm really proud of the boys. I'm really pleased for them. And they deserve it more than anything. Well, I mean, what a performance. The execution was absolutely sublime. I mean, some of those tries are probably the best we've seen, you know, certainly in the semi-final stage. I wouldn't be surprised they were the best in the competition. It's the style of rugby that we played from the start of the competition and we, we agreed that we weren't going to change our game plan for today. Um, I think they found it really hard because... <laughs> I think they found it really hard because they were so tired. It was a really physical game. St George's brought such a tough game to us today and they were really worthy semi-finalists as far as we're concerned. It's by far the toughest game we've had in this competition so far. So it made it a little bit harder for the boys because they had to dig that bit deeper, but I'm glad that they didn't deviate from their game plan and that they played the rugby that we've been playing all competition. Now, we've talked to quite a few coaches about the amount of celebrations that are going to go on, but when are the preparations going to begin for you? Two weeks is not a long time, is it? No, we'll just keep doing what we do normally, which is um, train when we can at lunch times. And yeah, I'm, I just trust that the boys know what they're doing and they stick to the game plan and, and it'll work. Well, it's been a fairy tale story so far. We wish you the very best of luck going forward to Twickenham. A round of applause for Stasha, coach of Graveney School. Thank you very much. <laughs> and there you have it. 
That wraps it up for us here at the Alliance Park here in, in North London. We've had four great days of rugby over the last two weekends. So we know our eight teams who will head to Twickenham a week on Saturday. And I do hope you can join us then. On behalf of Ed and myself, Johnny Bryan, and all, the whole team here who have worked very hard over the last two weekends. Thanks for joining us here and we'll see you at Twickenham in two weekends' time. Bye for now.